I, I don't think our children are making a whole lot of choices unless they have someone there sitting in front of them saying, I see you. When you are stereotyped and you know you are stereotyped, your behavior changes. You start playing to the stereotype or you start exactly. fighting the stereotype. Exactly. You get a choice. You surrender to it or you attack it. Both things are bad. And let's call that guilt. The stereotype of you as thug tells you what to do. Mm -hmm. The stereotype of you as loud talking, disrespectful teenage girl tells you what to do. Exactly. Nobody's ever pulled you out of that and allowed you to just be so that you can decide if I am that. And that's wow. what our educator, when they go through the innocent classroom, that's what we help them to do, is to be able to let a child be for a little while so you can see who that child is. To get that child from guilt to, to innocent, mm -hmm. in your space, for you, requires that you find their goodness and free them. The concept of good that we use is, uh, is Arist you know, comes from Aristotle. And Aristotle developed this definition of good, that for which all other things are done. So he would say, uh, when, when, a, when a main character does something, and even if it's horrible and you feel pain for them, or you, you're, you feel sympathy for them, empathy, he would say, that's their good showing. Mm -hmm. I challenge educators to find the good in a child no matter what the child is doing. And if you can hang in with a child through their guilty phase, find their goodness, allow them to manifest and respond to their goodness, in a short period of time, that child could look up at you and, and ask you a question that will just let you know that, they're, that you've got them. Then you're ready to ask that child to trust you because the child has proof that you're willing to go that mile. It's, it's more than just freeing our children, it's freeing our minds. Yes. This is a, in, in my interpretation, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but this is a, a journey into authenticity of the teacher and the child. Yes, absolutely. When you care, they know, okay? When you care, everybody knows. Um, yet, how do you show up caring? Uh, innocent classroom work and will work only if we show up wholeheartedly. Okay. At Jackson, we have a staff that strives to support students and families. Slowing down and finding the good in each student has helped us target our goals in a better way and has changed our culture for the last two and a half years. The partnerships and relationships and the mission, vision, and values of this organization is grounded in equity. Um, our, our black and brown students, our, our white students, um, we, and specifically with our students of color, wanting to make sure that they feel included, that they can be their full self and their parents can be their full self in our education system. Um, and that they can go to school and actually learn and that they're free from bias and free from discrimination um, and free from our prejudices of what it means to be a black and brown child. Loving each kid and like you said, making it a family in that classroom. Um, another big thing that kind of goes with that is the second I say, like, can I please have, and then everybody's like, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, you know. I think that comes with them feeling good and feeling safe. I see classroom causes a paradigm shift in how you think or work along a student. It helps all of us to reset and to reprocess the barriers that might get in the way of us as adults trying to establish strong, intentional, an authentic relationship with each child that walks into our school. It allows us as educators to greet and meet them every single day with new eyes, hopes, and expectations for each one.